We have coexisted over many years harmoniously with our biodiversity because we recognize the importance of the interdependence and the respectful relationship between humans, people, and nature. Today, sustainable use of biodiversity is seen as a real pillar of rural economies across our country, supporting hundreds of thousands of jobs. Sustainable biodiversity use also contributes to urban economies. For example, traditional medicine markets exist in nearly every major urban center in South Africa. There must be tangible beneficiation in communities when indigenous plant species are harvested for commercial benefit, whether it is for medicine, cosmetic, or other purposes. Sustainable mass cultivation of indigenous plant species must support the creation of businesses, must also support the establishment of factories and other value chain networks that allow for end products to be exported to the rest of the continent and indeed abroad as well. This mass cultivation <clears throat> can also assist land restoration and also land rehabilitation, <clears throat> as well as carbon sequestration, which is important in the context of climate change. Now, this is what a revised biodiversity economy strategy aims to achieve and to address. It aims to synergize our economic and conservation objectives by an emphasizing that a successful biodiversity economy must be linked to the restoration of ecosystems. It broadens the existing terrestrial goals and adds marine, coastal, eusterian, and freshwater opportunities. Now this strategy places the transformation of biodiversity sector at the center of all that we do. For us to fully harness the benefits of biodiversity, economy thereof, we have to understand its scope, its breadth, and also the opportunities that it gives rise to. So work is underway to develop natural capital accounting for biodiversity sector. This is being done through the partnership between the Department of Forestry, Fisheries, and the Environment, also Stats SA, and the South African National Biodiversity Institute. Now, the initiative will ensure that the contribution of the biodiversity sector, including its entire value chain, is formally recognized and embraced. Now, the global biodiversity framework that was adopted in December 2022 aims to ensure that biodiversity is valued, that it is conserved, that it is restored, it is nurtured and wisely used, sustaining a healthy plant and delivering benefits essential for all people. The work to conserve and restore our biodiversity takes place as the world is experiencing an increasingly destructive effect of climate change. African countries are among the most vulnerable to the effects of a rapidly changing climate. The Climate Change Bill, which is currently before the National Council of Provinces, seeks to enable a just transition towards a low-carbon, climate-resilient society, as we've always talked about. This just transition must contribute 
towards the creation of decent work for all, social inclusion, and the eradication of poverty. The bill recognizes that a robust and sustainable economy, as well as a healthy society, depend on the services that well-functioning ecosystems provide. The bill maintains that enhancing the sustainability of economic and social and ecological services is an integral component of an effective and efficient climate change response. Now, a just transition puts people at the center of decision making, especially those that are most affected by the transition, by empowering and equipping them for the new opportunities of the future, by skilling them, upskilling them, and reskilling them, and properly equipping them to be active participants in the new economies. And there are going to be new sectors of the economy that are going to arise. We must put rural communities at the center of every decision-making process and ensure that we are empowering and equipping them for the new opportunities in the biodiversity sector. Just as we will rely on forging meaningful partnerships between and business, government, and communities to grow and restore our country's conservation estate, we also need to deepen collaboration on ventures that help us to mitigate and adapt to climate change and its ongoing effects. So carbon sequestration projects are one such example for which funding streams are needed. And I call on industry and finance institutions, philanthropies, civil society and traditional leaders, healers as well and practitioners, to collectively embrace our vision for a transformed biodiversity economy. So I wish you well in your deliberations and look forward to seeing the results that will emerge from this Indaba. I do believe that assembled here, I would say is the brain's trust of our country when it comes to biodiversity matters. And you are the ones all assembled here who will always find solutions to some of the challenges and problems <clears throat> that confront us.